Um, so today's theme uh, focuses on ways to engage students uh, more deeply in the learning process. During the first session, we'll hear from three faculty who have leveraged technology to support that engagement. Uh, we're sure that you'll have many comments and questions, but we're going to ask that you save them until the end. We're, we've blocked off a big block of time, 15 minutes at the end, for questions. So <clears throat> first this morning, we'll hear from Ran Zhao um, from our Chinese department. And Ran will share with us her experience teaching an elementary Chinese course uh, where students engaged in core material outside of the course and class, allowing her to optimize time for communicative interaction inside of the classroom. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the flipping and active learning uh, in my class, in my elementary Chinese class. So um, I will be very quickly going over um, the, the overall course structure of my course, so you have some idea how the course is structured. And then I will spend some more time giving you an example uh, of one class period of 15 minutes and, and how that class is designed. So what students need to do before class and during class and after class. And then lastly, I'll share with you some, some of my reflections. There are a lot of them, but I'll just pick some. So the, the overall um, course structure, we know it, this is the flipped course. So of course, um, both before class portion and after class portion is important, um, as, as, as important as the in-class portion of students learning. Um, although I still give more emphasis to the during class time, because that's where the deeper learning occurs. That's where um, I can actively engage them. But in order to maximize that, I created a lot of instruction uh, videos, like grammar videos and how-to videos, um, make them available online so students can view them before they come to class. And they need to do their homework before class rather than after class. Because with those videos, they already learned their vocabulary and the grammar. They're ready to come in and go right into the activities we're going to engage them to, to further their learning and to build their skills further. And then, um, so let's just go into uh, um, our pre-class. So the pre-class activities focus primarily on learning knowledge, and because I think they can learn a lot of things independently, so that's self-study, they watching those videos individually, and uh, wherever they want to, in the library, their home, but they need to uh, really invest their time and energy and study it, because when they come to class, the first thing they do is a dictation quiz, the character quiz that we do every day. Um, yes, we you know, awfully intimidate our students and they have to come to class to a quiz every day. Um, and then um, this pre-class uh, learning focused on interpretive skills because they need to comprehend the materials, understand the, um, the text, the grammar, and the vocabulary. And then when they go to the, um, when they come to class after the quiz, and then um, they primarily apply the knowledge they've learned before class. So they need to use their knowledge, their knowledge vocabulary and the grammar, and then we engage in conversations and activities and the tasks. And, th and here, they work in pairs, small groups, or with the whole class, and uh, we're focused on their interpersonal skills, primarily listening and speaking, because this is a language class. We want to max maximize that 15 minutes just to focus on communication in, um, in the audio mode. And after class, they focus on sharing their knowledge they've learned before and during class, so they need to create something and share them um, on the internet so that a larger community beyond the class boundaries can learn from their, what they've learned. So they created a series of Learn Chinese With Me videos and post them online for other people to learn from what they have learned. And here they are focusing, their, focusing on their presentational skills. And now, um, here is the example. So I choose a unit we start, I think this, is, this happens at the uh, in the second week of the whole course. So the first week, they have their basic knowledge of learning Chinese tones and phonetic systems and character, the basics of characters, how characters are, um, are drawn or, or organized and the strokes order and everything. And then the second week, we 
get right into, you know, start to introduce yourself and get acquainted with each other. Um, so this is a unit. I choose this one because I want you, you guys, you folks here, if you are interested, can pick up some phrases and expressions um, along the way. Um, so you will find a, hand, a little handout with some um, greetings and what's your name, and <laughs> hello, things like that. If you're, in, if you're into it, you can start learn, and you can experience for yourself what the students are dealing with or trying to learn um, in their classes. Okay. So the first, uh, let's see, my learning objectives. Um, so uh, they need to learn how to exchange basic greetings. Um, probably some of you already learned that by looking at that handout. And then the second is how to ask someone's name and then provide your own. So this is. And then pre-class preparation, they need to self-study some materials, including the, the videos I created over the summer. There are 60 or so, some of them, okay? Um, so the first, they need, to, uh, well, they need to know how to look up unknown characters. And then they need to watch a video about Chinese pronouns because they need to ask, what's your name? Um, my name is, and uh, his name is, or her name is, something like that. And then the third one is they need to, um, how to, uh, there is a video on how to introduce names, like how to introduce family name and given name. Okay. Um, and then when they come to class, so they will be um, the mission. So I give them after the quiz. So the mission is uh, get to know each other in Chinese. Throughout the first week, they already know each other by everyone's English names, but now this, this will be the first time they were given their Chinese names. And, and by the way, those names are carefully chosen. They are not random. There's a lot of love into it. <laughs> Just like the Chinese parents give their kids names, they try to find the characters that sound nice and have really positive and good meanings. So, but uh, usually before we just give the students the whole index card with the, def the phonetics and the definition, everything is there. But this time around we want to give them, just confront them with that card with the characters on it. It's, it's your name. And then students are confronted with this new thing and they are awfully curious oh, what my name is and what this means. So that engaged them in immediately. And then, so this is something like this, an index card with a character, so nothing else. So now, now the task one is for them to find out what their Chinese name is. So they need to apply the knowledge they've learned before class that how to check up on a character in the online dictionary or phone, uh, iPhone apps. So they were very busy and uh, uh, don't want to be interrupted, so they were on that task. <laughs> And then, so of course, I'll work around and help them if there's any questions. So after this first task, they are very usually happy, okay? So I really love my Chinese names, um, okay? And then they are eager to share. And then this is where the second task come along. So they need to uh, share their Chinese names. They need to ask, okay, what, what, what's your name in Chinese? Because they've learned the vocabulary and the grammar before class. They can do that now. Can you do it now? <laughs> With that handout, can you ask your neighbor? <laughs> like, <a>, okay? <laughs> 你叫什么名字? <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. Be courteous and doing your basic greetings along the way. So, 你好. <laughs> and 你好. Right. 你叫什么名字? <laughs> and then 我叫. Okay, <laughs> so I see some engagement here um, and active learning going on right here in this room. <laughs> so I hope you you know your neighbor at least, okay, um, their name by using some Chinese. Of course, I didn't confront you with a new Chinese name. We don't have time for that. I thought about it. And then, so if, if the first task is driven by students' curiosity, so I use curiosity to engage them. And then the second task, I use the, the, the care, okay, and also the curiosity, because you're curious what your friend's Chinese name is, okay? Um, but you, you also I use that care to engage them because you care to know uh, what your friend's names are. And then that's the second task. The third, after they ask each other's Chinese names, and now I further challenge them by requiring them to remember everyone's Chinese name. Because so that the community building 
starts right from here. Okay, because I want them, I require them to care enough to know and remember each other's Chinese names and to pronounce their names correctly with beautiful tones because that's how you show respect in the community, in the relationship. And I also require them to remember each other's names so when during class times, whenever, when you need to report, share information about your friends, it's, it's not allowed that you refer to them as he said this and she said that. I told them it's rude. It will be so much better if you refer to like uh, Mike, Michael said this and Emily said that. So that kind of caring and respect um, is critical in building this learning community. And I emphasize that so I build that into this uh, task. And then they, they, they respond to that. They were eager to know. So the third task, if they need to do, need, need to fulfill this task, then they need to work in small groups and then helping each other. That's when the collaborative learning comes in. They need to, oh, I, I kind of got what's his name? Okay. 他叫什么名字? So you are building the skills and then building that community and then further you know, deepen their understanding of the language patterns as well. So this will go around, and then after they think they are done, I will quiz them. Okay, 他叫什么名字? <laughs> so Judy, 他叫什么名字? <laughs> so I do cold calls as well. So, <laughs> so that's, that's a way, another way to engage the students. They have to constantly you know, be alert. You know, they will be tested on. So now, after class, they, what they need to do is several of these things. The first, they need to uh, remember how to write their own Chinese names. Now there's the characters, and you need to know how to write them. And then after that memorization, I want them to create a video sharing the memories. So how I have remembered this particular character. And this is a semester-long project I asked them to do, is to create a series of Learn Chinese With Me videos. So here is a good example. This is the Chinese character Sui, which means year of age. And I can remember this character because there's a Shan radical on top, which means mountains. And as you age, you climb more mountains and you face more difficulties. And so you age mentally. And then there's a she radical, which means sunset on the bottom. And this means that as you age, you also see more sunsets and you live through more days. And so you also age physically. So this combination of aging mentally and aging physically is makes up the entire character sway, which is year of age. Beautiful, isn't that? <laughs> yeah, here a very proud teacher. <laughs> Yeah, um, so students make a lot of these videos. So each of them made about uh, 10 of them, and all of them, I put all of them together. And so they can watch these videos, they can share their tips. And then right now, Judy um, is helping me build a website so that we can publish these videos and, uh, and the community outside UVA can access and learn. And I think this is beautiful because this really allows me a window that, that I can look into how their creative mind works. Because usually in the language class, especially elementary level language class, you don't get that chance to see how imaginative they are, how creative they are, okay? Um, but but uh, when students are deeply, deeply engaged with one single character, their learning is much more profound. And I did the preliminary study of watching the videos they've created a story of, and then their dictation quizzes, because I know I have a lot of data on that. <laughs> so if they've created the story and made a video out of, uh, for a character, they never made a mistake on that character. And they will always remember that character for their whole life, probably. And there's one student told me that she loves this practice so much, she go ahead and make up a little story for each single one of the characters we have learned. We learned, by the way, about four or 500. So that's a lot of time spent on it. I didn't expect and ask them to spend that much time, but this is just idea how much they love this kind of activity. Um, 
and then I have that, that data showing if they've made this uh, video and then they don't make mistakes in their writing these characters. So it does have that teaching value there in addition to having fun and, uh, and uh, sharing some of their imaginations. And then another project that they need to work on after this is to work on their book. So here is a product of one student's book. And uh, so after they learn it, how to say each other's names, and then they need to go ahead writing, start, this is the first page of their book. So what they can write is only one, page, one sentence for, for themselves and for their Chinese friend. So this project asked them to, to engage with the native speaker of Chinese from our local community. And they need to interview them and have conversation. And based on what they've learned about that person, they write a little book about themselves on one page and their Chinese friend on the other. So the idea is to have their language grow. As you can see, you turn the pages, and then they can write more and more. They can see their progress along the process. And where their language skills build up and develop, their relationship develops as well. And we value that kind of relation building as well, because now they get to learn the culture in a very personal way, at the personal individual level, and we think we value very much. Um, so, and then they need to get into the next step of prepare for Tuesday's class. So the, the cycle um, starts again. So um, my reflection is focused on first, um, the design part, because this is what puzzled me most at first when I first started to flip my course. And then, so what's in and what's out? If you put everything out, then what do you do in class? Right? Um, so uh, this is the learning process. As it goes along, I start, it starts to become clearer for me. So what, what goes out is something students can do independently. They can do on their own. And what's, what's what I keep in class is the things that students need me, the instructor or you, and each other to learn and to master and to get better. And then what goes after class is give them a chance to apply what they've learned to a real world situation to make contributions and to share their knowledge. I think that um, works well for me. It's give me a kind of coherence that allow me to think, okay, oh, this design makes sense. And then we all know design is not enough, the implementation. So here are some lessons I've learned. Uh, the first is you really need to manage the management. You manage the timing, the manage the workload, and then manage emotions. There's a lot of emotions involved in this. When you first introduce a new model of learning, students tend to resist, so you need to be a strong advocate because I do believe the value of it. And then you need to, it's, it sounds like cliche, but you need to set that positive tone. You need to let the students know for, from the very beginning, so this is the experiment, exciting, but we know for sure there will be bumpy times. There will be something that will go wrong. There's one time in Kutura, like uh, 60 of our videos all gone, disappeared. <laughs> ah, panic time. But uh, I tell them, it's okay when things like this happen. It's okay. We'll work, we'll work on it. We'll solve the problem. Okay, so that gives them a, an opportunity to respond to taking risks and, uh, and learn from those, you know, not so smooth times. And then students respond to that as well. So just allow yourself to be vulnerable. Tell them, okay, there will be glitches, but it will be fine. And then um, you need to man really manage the workload for your students and for yourself. You really don't want to kill yourself for doing something new. I almost did that, but uh, um, so that's my lesson. Because when you learn something new, I attended the course design institute. It's uh, it's extremely useful experience for me. I learned so much. I got so excited. Okay, so I can't wait to try all oh, this and that and this and that. I got a long list of things I want to experiment. As a result, I overwhelmed my students as well as myself. <laughs> so. Um, a warning is that you've learned a lot of great stuff, and then, but uh, manage that timing and the spacing, and, and then give the students and yourself the proper dose of the good stuff. Okay. 
And then um, another lesson I learned is if you want you think something, for example, that video student, the video students made are really valuable and good. If you think that's the case, then make sure you allocate some class time for it. Screening some of the videos, let students see marvel at it. Wow, this is really great. Okay, so if you don't allocate class time for something you think which is also important outside class, then students will tend to think, well, that's just not as important as what we do in class. So that's a lesson I learned. I should have spent more time, you know, um, cheer, cheerleading, do some more cheerleading about the work they done, they've done outside of the class work, uh, classroom. And then the third one is to really involve your students, not just in their own learning, but uh, um, teaching. They, they appreciate the opportunity. They love to help out. And then when they teach, they are the best learner when they teach. They learn the best when they teach. So not only they learn better, and they contribute to that data you are collecting, the, the, the volumes of the grammar instru instructional videos you are trying to create. Okay, so this is the win-win. Um, so there's no reason not to involve them. Okay. Um, I think I'm a, I should be done. I should get off here. Thank you.